What's up everybody? This is a brief tutorial on the install of a Hummingbird Helix 7 G4. Uh, this one has side scan, down imaging, and the uh, dual spectrum 2D traditional sonar. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. I just have it loose for now, but um, you'll have a power supply. It'll be a two-pronged plug that goes into the rear of the unit. You have a red and a black uh, wire coming off of that. That'll go directly to your fuse panel. You have one power, one ground. That'll give you enough to turn it on. It takes a three amp fuse for protection. Uh, once you turn the unit on, you'll get a quick warning prompt, something about the mapping and the government. Um, you'll get to this screen where you can select your language. If it's English, uh, you'll just hit it says down here to choose settings and exit to continue so English and freshwater will hit exit and sorry about that should probably snug these up a little bit and this will give you a mapping uh, ability and the ability to run demo just wanted to show you that much this far uh, we'll be installing the transducer running some wiring from there on back Fortunately, these panels are removable. I'll just run it through the conduit that's already there. Run it down and out the back like the old hummingbird was when I bought the boat. Um, for now though, we at least have the ability to go through, check some settings. Uh, there's all kinds of things you can mess with in here. Auto chart. Uh, again, I don't have the transducer plugged in, so we're kind of limited on what we can see at this point, but just want to show you at least how to mount the unit, get power to it. Also touch on what uh, fuse is required to run the unit. And yeah, stay tuned. We'll be back here momentarily. I'll get the transducer hooked up. Maybe get a couple of shots on how I'm doing that and where I'm locating it. And we'll go from there. Before we get into the install of the transducer and the remaining portions of the unit, I figured we could touch on the menu options. We do have uh, the ability for each screen that we're on, no matter where we're at within the unit, we can just hit menu once, whatever screen you're on will bring up the menu options for that screen. If you double click it, it'll bring up your main menu screen. This will give you all your different options um, from fish alarms to ice mode to 2D switch fire, clear or max mode, display spectrum, full, wide, narrow, uh, pretty much everything you could need is going to be in here. Once you're on one of the setting options, uh, you can click exit. It'll take you back to the top and then you can go over to your next uh, region of the menu for your additional options. This one is for navigation, has all your waypoint settings and track settings. You can name things, edit things, uh, so forth and so on. So. Uh, next would be your chart. Chart will have map source, chart orientation, north up, or head north, or I'm sorry, head up. Uh, your symbol size, small or large, north reference true or magnetic. You can turn the indicator all together off if you choose to do so. Hit exit, it'll take you back to the top, then over. That'll bring you to your next section. This one is more so your alarms. Uh, or highlights rather for shallow water uh, things of that nature you can change the depth of these as needed here will be your main setup menu English you could do feet or fathoms statue miles nautical miles mile per hours or knots uh, this is your user mode angler custom will give you a few additional features maybe I'll do an extra video breaking down what more you gain from that um, one thing I do know is for the side imaging, you can uh, remove the, the, I believe they call it the contour, the black spaces between your side imaging, which shows directly under your boat. You may or may not want to do that as sometimes it'll highlight things directly in the water column or, um, you know, right under the boat per se, but that's up to you. I'm going to leave my own angler for now. You can also change your time zone, daylight savings and things of those nature or that nature here is all your different screens if you don't want all these options 
In other words, if you don't want to click through each screen to get to the screens that you actually want to use, you can just turn them off um, by hitting over, making them hidden. These are the different pairings available. You have um, your 2D, down image only, side image only, down image in 2D, side image in 2D, 2D, zoom, down imaging and side imaging, and uh, full side image and some additional stuff here. Lastly is your accessories, which is just going to show you that you have the screenshot waypoint option. You can just turn that on or off depending on what you want to do, but I think it's a neat feature to be able to snap a screenshot of each waypoint that you mark for future reference. Uh, again, I will be installing the transducer here in a moment, so stay tuned. Okay, I'm going to double check the installation manual for the transducer, but um, this, this boat did have a hummingbird on it previously. I'm not sure if I'll be able to reuse this bracket or not, uh, but nonetheless, this is my only out for running the wire, and I don't want to drill an additional hole in this boat, so uh, I'd have one there and one here. One or the other will have to work for me. Um, if, I, if I have to, I will uh, get a couple additional of these, and I'll move it over to the other side, but at least to start, you got to feed your wire in, um, from the connection end first and pull all your slack through. Leave yourself some room. You can always back feed it depending on how tricky your situation is for running the wires, but that's where I started. I'll run it in through here. I'll end up uh, running an additional piece of conduit just to protect this. Uh, unless I have room in this one, I'll squeeze it in there. Comes over, goes into here. Not all boats will be that easy. Some will be extremely difficult, but mine, everything runs up this channel here. So I just followed where all the other wires have been ran. It'll come to here. Um, this will end up popping off. Pull that out a bit. Give yourself some room. What I'll do is just run this down here. I'll end up zip tying it. That'll get me to this point. I have some actual wire fishers I will put in here, force it through. Once I get to there, I'll just go ahead and tape the connector into that and pull it back through here just so I can have it clean. I don't want it getting pinched or be visible in this area. Um, and then for me, it'll be pretty straightforward at that point. Come in here straight up to the unit and then we'll be on to mounting the actual transducer. Just a little tip, I just rewired this whole boat. I got these at Harbor Freight. Um, you can get them on Amazon as well, but it's a wire running kit. Makes life very easy versus not having it. One end's female, one end's male. Thread them together. Run your rods through wherever you need it. And uh, as you pull it out the other side, you can disconnect one at a time so you, you don't uh, run out of room to keep pulling your wires through so what I'm gonna do is connect these two I'll fish them in through here they'll pop out here put the transducer cord on it I will pull it back through there we'll be good to go especially with an aluminum boat make sure you have plenty of slack when you do this that way you don't uh, tear the sheathing up on the wire so again you'll fish your fish your uh, wire puller through there or wherever the area is you need to pull it tape up the end real good just bounce it back and forth until you get enough and uh it should pop right out the other side take your tape off feed your slack through and you'll be good to go yeah, so it's a new day as you can tell but i did get the transducer in um, haven't had a chance to test it yet but also if you have an aluminum haul boat um it's older boat this stuff here is kind of hard to find but eBay, sometimes Amazon has it. Uh, Purple Power does amazing. I'm gonna be posting a video to show the before and afters, but really clean this old boat up. Uh, but <clears throat> as I was saying, the transducer mount. So basically I just fished the cables from the front of the boat there back through this access panel and out. Uh, comes out this little hole and runs over and down. This was the best spot for me 
with the least amount of rivets as far from these as I could get uh, without interfering with the trailer where the old one was and some other factors that I took into play but pretty straightforward there's um, two slotted ports underneath this if you take this screw out this will fold up and um, what you want to do is read the manual of course because every boat is different fiberglass versus aluminum uh, and there's a bunch of different factors that it breaks down in the owner's manual or installation guide rather uh, but you want to make sure your boat is level left to right and up and down before doing it and you want to have the bottom right corner if you're mounting on the starboard side uh, as close to the bottom as this as you can uh, while maintaining about a 50 percent coverage uh, or exposure from the bottom of your boat if you put a flat edge here it should kind of split the difference on the transducer uh, which there's also a line here so you want that to be more or less flush with the bottom of the boat when you lay your straight edge on it which mine seems to be um, you do have a little bit of adjustability whether you click it down or up but you want this as level as you can get it level this way level that way while the boat is level um, that's important and then once you do that you're going to put you some 5200 silicone in your two screw holes this transducer requires a i would believe it was a 5 30 seconds drill bit um, that actually was too big thankfully i had a bigger screw that i could make work for the one hole that i pre-drilled then i stepped it down in size so I, I would recommend going a little smaller and working your way up if need be but fill your holes with the 5200 screw in one side get everything level double triple quadruple check it and then screw your second hole um, again they'll be right behind here and then i would leave it i wouldn't put this last screw in until you get it on the water because it's a slotted uh port here underneath of this bracket when it folds up so if you have to lower it a little bit or raise it a little you can do that without drilling any new holes if you only have two screws once you put in this third screw and there's actually a fourth screw on the bottom behind this this mount uh you you're stuck if you have to go up or down you're gonna have to drill new holes and that means you have to pull the whole thing off silicone the old holes put it all back on and then um that will keep you from having that issue so yeah i would i would definitely put your two screws in first tighten it as tight as you can get it by hand don't strip it out using an impact trying to save a couple seconds go out test it make sure everything works high speed low speed side scan traditional finding good bottom as long as all those things are happening come back pre-drill your third hole uh, and your fourth hole and go ahead and secure it in place other than that i just reused the old clip that i had like I said, I fished the wire up and ran it the rest of the way. Uh, I left all my slack bundled up here. I'm going to go ahead and zip tie this all up in here so it's out of out of the way and doesn't get damaged. That's pretty much it. Plugs can only fit in one place. One's the power and one's the transducer. And um, yeah, overall, it's pretty easy installation. Even if you haven't done it before, the instructions that come with it are very clear on what to do and what not to do and as far as the unit itself you saw it was just a simple power and ground hookup run your transducer cable however you see fit and uh, spend some time just making sure everything is level and square when you're doing your transducer and the proper height for the type of boat that you have other than that um, that's pretty much it to wrap this up again stay tuned I will have a new video up uh, shortly uh, showing a demo before and after and adoring of using the purple power aluminum brightener as you can see it's not perfect by any means but really clean this boat up the transom area already had some kind of stain this etching um, was already there prior it wasn't as white um, but you could clearly see that he had used something else prior so um that didn't do great there but everywhere else it really cut that grime and watermarks off and uh cleaned the boat up a good bit overall pretty happy with that so check that out and don't forget give me a like and subscribe if you appreciate the video it definitely helps me out and we still have our 100 subscriber giveaway active 
So uh, look forward to that video coming up soon. Thanks, guys.